My name is Gia Voltz. I have a lab at the University of Colorado in Boulder in the Department of Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. My lab studies the question of how organelles get their shape. And in particular, we've been studying the structure and dynamics of the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. And you can see here behind me this beautiful picture of the tubular ER network in an animal cell. And probably one of the most interesting features of the ER is how dynamic this ER tubular network is. We started to wonder, you know, why is that? Why are ER tubules constantly growing, fusing, and rearranging all the time? One of the ideas that we have was that maybe ER tubules are dynamic to form contact sites with other organelles that are also dynamic. What we thought we could do was to use live confocal fluorescence microscopy to image the dynamics of the ER relative to the movements of other organelles. We thought we could see contact sites form over time. But what really surprised us was that when we imaged other organelles relative to the tubular ER network, they were tightly associated with ER. So if you look at this movie here, you can see all these late endosomes moving around and pulling strings of ER tubules behind them. This makes you wonder why is it important for endosomes to traffic attached to the ER network. So a few years ago, we discovered that ER contact sites define the position of mitochondrial division. So we wondered if this is also true for endosomes. Do ER contact sites define the position where endosomes also undergo fission? So a graduate student in my lab, Ashley Rowland, in collaboration with a technician, Patrick Chitwood, set out to image endosome fission. To do this, they transfected cells with an ER marker in green, a late endosome marker in red, and pulse labeled EGF cargo in blue to show that we were visualizing productive fission events. So this is a typical example of a fission event. A bud labeled with the endosome marker starts to grow out. The ER tubules rearrange around that bud and form sort of this cup-like shape. And then the ER tightens up around the bud almost like a cinch on a sack and the endosome bud traffics off in another direction. And I think what's really amazing about this image here is the way the ER rearranges around the bud in, in a very compelling structure and changes its shape as the bud undergoes fission. And this suggests that the ER is not only recruited to the position of fission, but also the timing of the fission when you look at the way it's rearranging its structure. To more clearly resolve the position of ER contact relative to the site of late endosome fission, we elongated late endosomes by knocking out dynamin 2. And you can see an example of what happens. Tubular endosomes form. They're still pulse labeled with cargo. They still maintain contact with the ER network, and they still undergo fission. What you're going to see is this ER tube kind of slide up along this tubular endosome, move up into position, and settle into a bit of a groove on the tubular endosome, and then endosome fission occurs right where that ER tubule crosses over at that tubular endosome. And what's really cool about this movie, too, is the way that the bud maintains contact with another ER tube and traffics off in another direction. And these kind of images are just very compelling, the way that the ER uh, is recruited to not only the position, but also the timing of these events. So our data was showing us that ER tubules were marking the position of fission, but those two movies I just showed you also suggest that ER tubules are being recruited to the bud neck just before fission occurs. And so what we were hoping to do was to capture bud formation with a marker that would mark that sorting domain and then ask when is the ER recruited relative to the formation of the bud. And to do this, we transfected cells to now label not only the ER and the endosome, but a marker of the wash complex FAM21 to label the sorting domain. In this movie, you can see the white sorting domain form but the ER is not there at first. It suddenly shoots into place at the neck of the bud, and the neck tightens up at the contact site, and fission follows. So the ER both marks the position and the timing of the fission event. So in our final experiment, we changed the shape of the ER by overexpressing reticulin proteins, and then scored the effect on late endosome fission efficiency. When you overexpress reticulins, ER tubules are much longer, less reticulated, and less dynamic. Here is an example of what happens to endosome fission. 
Late endosomes are still dynamic and they still form buds, but as predicted, the buds usually collapse and they don't undergo fission. The reduction in bud fission is reduced by about 70% when ER shape and dynamics are altered, and this suggests a strong connection between ER shape and dynamics and endosome fission. So movies like the ones I showed you demonstrate that ER contact sites are defining the position and the timing of endosome fission. And for us, this is really surprising that the ER has these non-traditional roles in directly regulating the biogenesis and trafficking and fission of other organelles at contact sites and reveals that there's still much to learn about organelle biogenesis.